Hello everyone! Today, we will be tackling the terms used in anatomy. So get ready and let's dissect our way into the world and wonders of the language of anatomy. Always remember that cleanliness is the first law of health. Because it ensures minimal infections upon contact. That is why you should make sure that all of the materials that you will be using for every medical procedure are properly sanitized. But before anything else, let us have a quick recap on the anatomical positions, directional and regional terms, and body cavities are also called as the language of anatomy, for us to be familiar with the terms that we will encounter later on. The language of anatomy exists in order to minimize confusion when discussing areas or specific points on the body. This reference is used in anatomical positions. The figure shows the standard body position. It is when the person stands erect, face facing forward, arms hanging at the side with palms facing forward, palms pointing away from the body, and the feet is parallel facing forward. Since we will be utilizing a chicken's body as a cadaver to properly identify and distinguish the language of anatomy, here is a comparison of the human body to a chicken's body. If everyone is looking at the exact same position, it will be less confusing, right? Let us now proceed to the first two directional terms, which are the superior and the inferior parts of the body. Superior, or also called as cranial or cephalic, means toward the head and or upper part of the body, while inferior or coda means away from the head and or towards the lower part of the body. To further understand, let's have an, an example. Take a look at this point in the chicken. The heart is located here, while the small intestines are located here. Based on the locations, we could say that the heart is located superior to the small intestines, or the other way around. The small intestines are located inferior to the heart. Now, let us look at the body on a different side. We can differentiate it from anterior and posterior. Anterior, or also known as ventral, means towards, or at the front of the body. While posterior, or dorsal, means behind, or at the back side of the body. This time, let's look at the chicken's body. For this example, we can observe that the breast is anterior to the back cape, since the breast is located at the front of the chicken's body and the back cape is at the back side. Let us now move on to another set of directional terms, the medial and lateral. Medial means the inner side or towards the midline of the body, while lateral means the outer side or away from the midline of the body, where the midline is an imaginary line that divides the body into two equal parts, the left and the right halves. For better understanding, here's an example. We can see that the heart lies in the middle of the chest. We can say that the heart is medial to the arms. Given the definition, we can conclude that the arms are lateral to the heart. Next is proximal and distal. These terms are usually used when describing a part of the appendicular body. To give you a brief description, the actual body consists of the head, neck, and trunk. The appendicular body, including the limbs and the appendages that are connected to the actual body. Proximal means close to the origin of the body part, while distal means farther from the origin of the body part. For a simpler example, using the given definition, we could say that the thigh is proximal to the foot, or we could say that the foot is distal to the thigh. Moving on to another set of directional terms, we have superficial and deep. Superficial or external means closer or towards the surface of the body, whereas deep or internal means further away from the surface of the body. We can say that the feathers are superficial to the skin, and the skin is located deep into the feathers. But, since your chicken has already lost its feathers, here's an illustration for you to visualize the given example. By knowing these anatomical and directional terms, there will be less confusion when discussing anything related to anatomy. Isn't it amazing? But that's not all. We still have the regional terms, body planes, body sections, and body cavities to review. Now, let's move on to what we call the regional terms. This will help us in identifying the different regions in the body. Let's start with the cephalic region, which is related to the head or situated near or in the head. For the anterior landmarks of the cephalic region, we have frontal, orbital, nasal, buccal, oral, and mental, while the only posterior landmark is the occipital, which means the back of the head. Next is the cervical region. This refers to the region on or around the neck which begins at the base of the skull and through a series of seven vertebral segments connects to the thoracic or chest region of the spine. 
for the upper limb region, we have the following landmarks. For the anterior landmarks, we have acromial, deltoid branchial, antecubital, antebranchial, and carpal. For the posterior landmark, we only have olecranal, the posterior surface of the elbow. We also have the manus region, which encompasses the digital landmarks of the hand, which are the fingers. For the thoracic region, we have three anterior landmarks, the sternal, axillary, and pectoral. Well, for the back region, we have from the top, the scapular, vertebral, lumbar, sacral, and gluteal to the bottom. We have one landmark in the abdominal region, which is the umbilical region of the body. For the pelvic region, we have the groin or the inguinal region. While well, for the pubic region, we have the genitalia. Lastly, we have the lower limb and the pedal region. First, the lower limb region. We have the following anterior landmarks, the causal, femoral, patellar, crural, and the fibular, which is the lateral part of the leg. For the posterior landmarks, we have the popliteal, which is the posterior surface of the knee, and the sural, which is the posterior surface of the leg. Then we have the last landmarks of the pedal region, which are the anterior landmarks called the tarsal, which means the ankle, and the digital region, which are the toes. For the posterior landmarks, we have the calcaneal, which is the heel of the foot, and the plantar, which is the sole of the foot that is located in the inferior surface of the body. Since we have already discussed the terms used to describe the external parts of the body, how about its external structures? To study this, we need to cut the body into planes and sections. We have four anatomical planes, namely sagittal, frontal, transverse, and oblique. To start, the sagittal plane is a lengthwise cut that divides the body into left and right portions. If a cut passes through the midline of the body, we call it a mid-sagittal plane. But if the cut does not pass through the midline of the body, then it is called the parasagittal plane. Moving on, the frontal plane is a sideway cut that divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. Meanwhile, the transverse plane is a horizontal cut that divides the body into superior and inferior portions. Lastly, the oblique plane cuts the body in an oblique manner or any diagonal direction. Last but not the least, let's talk about the body cavity. It is defined as the important spaces that protect delicate organs and allow the organs to change in shape and size. The abdominal pelvic is part of these cavities, and since the abdominal pelvic stores many organs, it can be divided into four quadrants that form nine regions. Shown on the screen are the figures that show the four quadrants and nine regions, as well as the organs that can be seen in each region.